when a gorilla gave birth to a rare baby at a Dutch zoo, the doctors realized something was seriously wrong. Racing against the clock, the fate of two gorillas and the entire zoo was hanging in the balance. Looking down into one of the most important gorilla enclosures on the planet, Wilco Olympus was preparing for a momentous occasion. Conservation hopes from all around the world rested on his shoulders, and there was no room for error. At the center of the operation was Ngela, a 20-year-old gorilla at the Burger Zoo. She didn't know that growing inside her was something that threatened to take her life during the birth. And neither did Wilco, who was in charge of the great apes at the zoo. Not only were his days filled with managing the department, but he had become known locally for his activism efforts. For years, he had been rallying for support of the zoo. However, the zoo's future hung by a thread when its owner tragically passed away. With no clear succession plan in place, financial turmoil threatened to plunge the zoo into bankruptcy. The situation became dire, leaving the dedicated staff uncertain about the future of the beloved institution. It was only through determined and passionate fundraising campaigns that the zoo managed to scrape together the necessary funds to keep the doors open. This pivotal moment marked a turning point as the community rallied behind the cause and the zoo was able to continue its vital conservation efforts. Wilco's passion consumed his life. He told everyone he met about their project to help increase the population of gorillas, an endangered species that weren't going to survive without intervention. It was vital for scientific and ethical reasons for humans to help, he told them, but they still struggled to afford certain equipment, medicine, and treatments. In the afternoons, Wilco would stop by and check on Ngela, watching her in awe, wondering what her future held. On a fateful day, he would find out. The other zookeepers had been planning Ngela's delivery for months, putting things meticulously into place with no room for error. Wilco was told that Ngela had been even more withdrawn than usual, even refusing to eat. He knew this could be a sign of impending labor. She was becoming restless, moaning, and began lying down. Just as Wilco expected, she was going into labor. Springing into action was a team of zookeepers, ready to jump in and intervene at any moment. Even though the conservation center was woefully underfunded, the people who worked there had no shortage of commitment to the cause. Each of them would often work overtime, night shifts, and volunteer just to keep the place running. Without proper portable facilities, they had to set up a tent in the corner of Ngela's enclosure. Some of the zookeepers had brought blankets from home and laid them out on the floor to make her more comfortable, and Ngela wandered into the cozy corner without encouragement, making herself at home and preparing her body for labor. Despite all their planning, though, they had forgotten about a huge possibility that was soon to cause chaos, and the gorilla was going to need all the help she could get to make it through. Ngela had already gotten to work. With enormous pushes, the tiny black head began to emerge. She was an experienced mother, but there was something about this birth that was very different. She had to draw deep for strength and resilience. After almost an hour, which was much longer than usual, and with the assistance of a few helpers, the moment arrived. The fruit of Ngela's labor was a bright new baby boy gorilla, with shiny eyes and a big gaping mouth gasping for the fresh air of the world for the first time. Ingela scooped it up, cradling her newborn and using her dark hairy arms as a cushion in a heartwarming moment. Its tiny hand gripped onto her finger as she inspected him top to bottom, turning his body over and looking for any signs of defect. Once she was satisfied, the experts had their turn too, and Ingela patiently allowed vets to check the vital signs of the crying baby, knowing that the team was there to help. She had been through this before, and her babies always came back to her. The team was fortunate to find that it was breathing normally and responding well to tests. Wilco congratulated everyone on a job well done and began looking through the photographs to select one for the local newspaper. Suddenly, though, Ingela was twitching in pain, her body becoming restless, and her focus was thrown away from the baby. Something was happening inside of her, and it was serious. Looking on from a distant observation deck, Wilco suspected that it could be some kind of internal bleeding. The failure to perform X-rays or ultrasounds on Ingela had been a risk, and it could prove to be a fatal miscalculation. She was rolling around on the ground as the attending vets tried to administer some medicine. Every time they were close, though, the gorilla lashed out, slapping away their hands and returning to the ground. Ingela was determined to refuse any kind of help. Sedating her could risk her health and any kind of surgery would be a risk to Ngela. 
That's when Wilco realized what might be happening. He radioed down for the team to prepare for another birth. At first, they looked up at him with puzzled looks on their faces. Some of them had been working at the zoo for over 20 years and never experienced a twin birth from any gorilla. They didn't take much convincing though. Soon, once they inspected Ngela, they saw it with their own eyes. A slither of light gray and pink was peeking through, edging closer to the outside world. Wilco was right, and now that the team was close by, they were able to better assist with the procedure. Twin births were virtually unheard of in gorillas, and even less likely was it for both babies to come out of the birth unharmed. The immediate threat was to Ngela's health. She was beginning to bleed heavily, and fatigue had set in. Ngela looked to be in much more pain than before. She groaned in agony, holding the bottom part of her stomach, bracing herself for consecutive waves that rippled through her entire body. Another long period of labor followed, this time over half an hour. By the end of it, Ngela was outstretched on the ground, heaving from exhaustion. What had appeared was a second near-identical baby, only this time a girl. It was just as tiny and adorable as its slightly older brother, but her cute appearance concealed a myriad of problems. The second baby wasn't as healthy as the first. It was coughing, short of breath, and showed signs of chronic dehydration. Any of these could pose a serious risk. Altogether, it would be a miracle if she survived. There was no time for Ingela to hold it, so the baby was rushed out of the enclosure by the team and into an operating room by doctors. When Ingela did sit up slightly, a few moments later, taking a breath to recover, she watched on with fear as her baby disappeared out through the gate, along with all of the humans. As before, she trusted the team with her baby, but the labor had been incredibly taxing on her body. She was weakened, out of breath, and after closing her eyes, she drifted off to sleep under the dutiful eye of a vet who had stayed behind. The team was putting out fires in all areas. It was an emergency situation, with Ingela passed out and her daughter being rushed out of the enclosure, clinging to life. Nobody knew it yet, but this was a completely wrong decision, and one that would have catastrophic consequences. Meeting them on their way to the surgical area, Wilco jogged along beside them, offering up his expertise. The first thing to do was hook the baby up to several tubes, ensuring that it would be getting a steady flow of water and nutrients. From there though, the treatment plan became less clear. They couldn't keep this up for too long. There was almost complete silence between the team. None of them had any optimism about the survival of this baby. Usually, if a baby came out unconscious or not breathing properly, they would have to put it to sleep. Wilco was nowhere to be seen inside the room. That's because he was busy. Thinking quickly and making some calls to nearby research facilities, Wilco tried to get his hands on some experimental medicine that he had heard about. It might be the baby's only chance at survival, and if the zoo had received more funding, they would have had it in supply. Wilco was frustrated at the situation, but knew that he had to remain composed. That became more difficult as different zoos rejected his request. The medicine was specifically used with this kind of western lowland gorilla. Unfortunately, none of the nearby zoos had any medicine on hand. The closest was a non-commercial part of Spain. That was good news and bad news. It meant that it could be sent almost immediately, but even with express shipping, the earliest it would be arriving would be in a few days. The team was giving round-the-clock care, but it might not be enough for the little gorilla to hang on that long. Wilco was thinking about the bigger picture. Ingela likely wouldn't be able to give birth again at this age, and if this female twin didn't make it, that was one less potential mother of the future. Repopulation efforts all depended on having enough females to carry babies. Outside the care unit, Ingela was waking from her sleep. Caught in a daze, she struggled to make sense of where she was, but once things came into focus, she became acutely aware of her missing child. She was feeling the time pressure too, not knowing how long it had been since the doctors had taken her little one. Having now recovered from the labor, she was full of energy and feeling slighted. As the hours dragged on, she understood something was wrong. The humans were nowhere to be seen. She picked up the male twin in one arm and ran towards the edge of her enclosure, pounding on the fence with her free hand, desperate to get someone's attention. The vet tasked with keeping watch in the enclosure bolted out a hidden door, fearful that a protective mother could turn violent at any moment. There was no response to Ingela, who by now was roaring into the air. The silence only enraged her more. Meanwhile, the team was inside and had seen on their surveillance monitor what Ingela was doing. As far as they were concerned, it was good news. 
It meant she was alive and well. Now, they turned their attention entirely to the task at hand, trying all they could to keep her second baby alive. But the signs were not looking good. With its heartbeat dropping, its breaths drawing quicker, and the fact that it had been lying almost motionless for hours, almost all hope was lost. Wilco had a radical idea. However, when he first proposed it, he was quickly dismissed by his colleagues. Wilco was proactive and full of initiative, but he also tended to go against the grain, trying unconventional methods that weren't supported by the knowledge they had all studied. As the situation became more desperate though, it was decided to give it a shot. Wilco wanted to give Ingela a chance to hold her baby, in the hopes that it would spark some kind of deep maternal pairing and deliver a miracle, and he was going to do it personally. Still dressed in a white surgical dress, he carried the almost lifeless baby out into Ingela's enclosure, who poked her head up with interest immediately. Ingela was overcome with emotion, running towards Wilco. There was a brief moment when the team was unsure if she would be aggressive or not, but those fears disappeared as she gently picked up her second twin from Wilco's arms. The two exchanged a long look of understanding. As the gorilla turned around though, she yelled out a powerful groan, realizing how weak and unresponsive it was. She wasn't going to give up. Ngela cradled the newborn tenderly, rocking it from side to side while she shuffled around the enclosure, unable to stay still for long. Shockingly, that's when things turned around. Feeling the warm embrace of its mother, the small gorilla slowly stretched its limbs out, a level of movement it hadn't made since birth. Wilco was still just meters away and couldn't believe his eyes. He had been waiting around, expecting to have to carry the body out of the enclosure soon. Even though it was his idea, in the back of his mind, there wasn't much hope. But as the baby nestled its body closer to Ingela's chest, the mother held both twins together, side by side, clutching them and sinking her head in between their bodies. It was a touching moment. To the team's surprise, this seemed to radically improve the baby's health. Wilco approached the two again and softly rested a stethoscope on the baby's chest, finding that its heart rate was picking up again. For a moment, Wilco couldn't believe that this seemed to be working as he predicted. He stared up at the observation deck and gave a huge grin to his colleagues, sticking his thumbs in the air in their direction. It was promising, at least for the time being. A couple more tests proved that it was true. This baby was on the way to recovery. The next day, the much-needed medicine arrived. Wilco ran out to meet the delivery van in the parking lot at the crack of dawn, scribbling his signature before rushing back into the zoo. His hair messy and his eyes baggy from a sleepless, coffee-filled night, the delivery man was startled by his appearance. Back inside, Ingela had spent the entire night with the babies. She was keeping the female twin wriggling around by keeping it closer to her chest each time its energy dipped. She seemed to instinctively know that falling into a deep sleep would be dangerous. Ingela hadn't slept yet either. Neither had the team, who were watching her from a distance. But now that the medicine was ready, a fresh wave of adrenaline spurred them on. Once again, Wilco entered the enclosure. He had developed a rapport with Ingela, who now trusted the zookeeper more than any other person. Injecting the medicine, only a few hours passed before it showed signs of working. The baby's life was saved, and for the first time in days, Wilco sat back in his chair to relax. News of the momentous event spread throughout the international gorilla conservation community, making waves. One gorilla birth was newsworthy enough, but to have twins was unbelievable, and the way the team managed the entire operation was inspiring zoos around the world and shaking up established knowledge. With the zoo in the public spotlight, a fresh round of fundraising poured in, especially for the conservation project at Burger Zoo. And with the amount of money pledged, the conservation center was set to have a long future. The animals had their future secured. He and his colleagues celebrated like never before. Every member of the team was touched by the experience, each in a different way. For Wilco, it reminded him why he loved his job and couldn't imagine doing anything else. The news changed the way the zoo handled animal births for good. Recognizing how important it was for a baby to feel its mother, face-to-face -face time was now a key part of the procedure. For his quick thinking and leadership, Wilco was able to secure medicine, equipment, and new facilities for all the animals. But he still found himself spending most of his free time with the gorillas, especially the twins, who were now named in Hasa and in Kato. Despite all of the stress and headaches that the emergency had caused, looking at Nkato's little face made all of the work worthwhile.
and there was no doubt that the turning point in Ingela's pregnancy was her cradling her baby. As the days turned into weeks, the baby gorillas, Nhasa and Nkato, continued to defy the odds. Their once fragile bodies grew stronger with each passing day, their coughs and shortness of breath gradually giving way to robust vitality. The survival rate of twins in the wild is often low due to the challenges they present, such as the demanding nutritional needs of the mother and the logistical difficulties of transportation. But thanks to the tireless efforts of the veterinary team at Burger Zoo, combined with Ingela's unwavering maternal love, they nurtured their growth and resilience. The twins became a symbol of hope, not just for the zoo and its conservation efforts, but for the entire community. Their survival sparked a renewed commitment to protect endangered species, and their journey inspired generations to come. The world watched in awe as Nhasa and Nkato thrived. Now, many years later, they're the perfect example of what an unbreakable spirit of survival and the power of unwavering motherly love is capable of. The gorillas are now young adults, just living a carefree life with their family at Burger Zoo. What an incredible story! Let us know what you thought in the comments below.